My name's Doug Hagstrom and I work with Basel Area and uh, will be your host today where we'll be talking about academic industry collaborations in the Basel Area, um, which is something that's really exciting. Um, I think Basel is a fantastic place to do this because we have um, you know, a great number of interesting in in institutions and a great number of interesting industries. Um, the three today, the University of Basel, Fachhochschule in Nordwest Schweiz and ETH Zurich DBSSE, are the three co-presenting organisations um, and they'll tell you a little bit about themselves and um, we'll also hear a, a story of collaboration. And I think um, for me, collaboration is about seeing possibilities, sort of unplanned collisions and then knowing what to do when that happens. Um, and hopefully uh, by the end of today, you'll have had a little bit of, of all of those. Um, some housekeeping. Uh, we will be recording the session. Um, so if you would like to not be seen, turn off your camera. But otherwise, I would love to see your faces. So myself and our presenters don't feel like we're shouting into nothingness. Um, Today, we'll start with some introductions, background on, on the institutions. We'll have a presentation from Insphero um, and their collaboration partners. Uh, and then we'll have some breakout rooms, which will be a chance for you to, to do a deep dive and learn a bit more about either the uh, collaboration itself, how to do a collaboration or what you could collaborate about. Um, so, and then we'll, you know, uh, see if people are interested in and what more they would like to see in the future. So, as I said, turn off video if you're uncomfortable, otherwise we'd love to see you. Um, who's presenting today? We have Alessandro Massetti. Say hi and give us a wave, Alessandro. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Andrea Huber-Bromsala from DBSSE. Hi, good evening. Uh, oops, sorry. Johannes uh, and Marion from FHMV. Hello. Great. And then David, Christian, and Olivier from uh, the Insphero collaboration. Hello, everyone. Great. And myself and Adrian from Basel Area Business and Innovation. So. Adrian, give us a wave. Yeah. Hey. Great. <laughs> All right, and now um, I'd actually like to uh, hear from you uh, a little bit about who you are. Um, so I've just launched a poll question. Uh, so please um, answer whether you're from academia and you're here because of a general interest in collaboration. Um, you're, you have a specific collaboration that you're thinking about or you have a collaboration that you're um, involved in and, and want to learn more and industry, those same questions. And the last one is, of course, the option of just here for the upper oak because there's no Christmas market to go to anymore. All right, I think, I think everyone who's voted is who's going to vote has voted. Um, so I will end the poll now and share the results. Um, and I think this is, is I think, pretty good for um, collaboration in, in that we've got uh, a pretty close to even max. We've got academia here with a bit of general interest um, and also a lot of industry here who's looking to, to learn a bit more. So. Um, hopefully we will be able to make some of those connections. And we have five people here looking for unplanned collisions. So we'll have a few of those as well. All right. Um, if there's, what I'd also would like um, you to do is just in the chat, put in um, uh, what you're interested in 
uh, getting out of today. Um, and Aunt and Heike have, have already put in some details in the chat. So please just take the next 30 seconds uh, and put in your name. Uh, actually, your name will be there automatically, but just what you're looking to get out of today. So we can um, make sure at the end of the day whether we've actually done those things. All right, we're a bit shy. Or it takes time to write. Huh? To find the type. type. Mm. Yeah. Right. Interesting side note from the poll. Uh, there is apparently only Olivier who is already from, so in industry, but already in a collaboration. There's only one respondent there, mm -hmm. which is good. Huh? Every, everybody's looking for new things. So there's a bit of looking around, Roche, P Red looking for um, some partnerships, um, understanding of the life science network, which is good. Um, yeah, and Heike from the looking at the region of Basel, which is great. bit of a general orientation, we can certainly provide that. Um, so I think we can do that. Okay, I think that that's, that's pretty good. I think if our speakers can, can keep that in mind as they, as they go along. Um, and uh, we are, we have, a, we have an expert here looking to share some knowledge about membrane and plastic. So that is, is almost on topic. So, great. Then what I would actually like to do is move on and give some background on the institutions that are here. And I will start by handing over to Adrian Springer from Basel Area Business and Innovation. Thanks, Doug. So two minutes about Basel Area. We are the innovation and economic promotion of the cantons Basel Stadt, Basel Land and Jura. For one thing, we help companies move to the Basel Area and secondly, we help startups to be successful and in particular in our focus industry, namely biotech, digital health and industry 4.0. In these fields, we uh, run startup acceleration initiatives and these initiatives are very selective. Uh, only three to six projects with the most promising business cases um, get all the support. But if you have a groundbreaking technology and you don't really understand your business case yet, we can also help you with that through our Venture Mentoring Program. And uh, this is an expert mentoring service that provides uh, you rapid access to advice to help you shape your business case. And it consists of individually prepared meetings with industry experts, entrepreneurs, consultants, and it is meant to close the information gap in your business case and better understand your risk reward profile. Um, to name some examples, we can help you clarify questions around IP, regulatory pathway, get you in touch with uh, insurances to discuss your reimbursement chances and your business model. We can also get you in touch with business angels to get early feedback. Basically, any strategic question that fits uh, a two-hour meeting, two to four-hour uh, meeting can be answered. And you are eligible if you are from the Basel region and you plan or you plan to incorporate here. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Adrian. I would now like to hand over to the first of our university collaborators, and that would be Alessandro. Thank you, Doug. Uh, and thank you all for uh, joining us. I will now uh, share my screen. Uh, to say a couple of words about the University of Basel and how the University of Basel helps bridging the gap between academia and industry. So I hope soon you'll be able to see my screen. 
So, uh, as Doug mentioned, my name is Alessandro Mazzetti and I'm the person responsible for the University of Basel Innovation Office to support and enable industry academia collaboration, a bit uh, reaching in the university to check what we have of amazing and interesting and a bit reaching out to industry to check what uh, the needs are and how can we help. Um, we we feel that so I'm I'm tailoring a bit my three three minutes on a on on some question and some points that really we feel that fit uh, very well with the fact that our business is a people's business in the end and so we really put at the center of our effort the innovation ecosystem and, and community here in in the region and we really have three items and three points that really uh, keep us up uh, and awake at night and really want to to push them which is uh, opportunities and success so more opportunities enabling more collaboration foster entrepreneurial spirit in an excellent way and and also fostering and supporting diversity in this and really uh, trying to bridge the gap at the difficult somehow sometimes difficult interface between industry and academia in terms of uh, needs wishes desires goals etc and how how is it so? We really strive and really um, uh, put all our efforts in try to find build enough critical mass on top of scientific excellence to be really visible and able to to convey our our supportive spirit. And we also try to build an entrepreneurial culture, which is really striving for excellence and and supporting and fostering diversity. And in in the end, this uh, this is really our point on how to enable more collaboration to happen between academia and industry for a mutual mutual value uh, but also at, at the same time we have three uh, strong items you see on the on the left side here uh, that really push us to come every day and work in, in, in our office in the morning. And it's really the way of understanding what industry needs and reach out, also build up collaboration models, which maybe have not been there before. So we are really open to understand how to make it, it function, even case by case, and then uh, tap into our local and, and global network. So we might, in the Basel region, as Doug mentioned, we have something extremely excellent, but we uh, might want to build this more with a global perspective and so uh, in fact as you as you see here our, we, we really strive to build a deep understanding of the need and the challenge together with the companies to to co-create and design together the most effective uh, collaboration starting from excellence in science and really reaching out uh, locally and globally to the innovation community now just uh, relatively briefly you might or might not know about University of Basel, but in a, in a nutshell, University of Basel is a strongly research focusing university. We are a university that's really rooted in, in top science, in top and excellent science, in the basic sciences and uh, in also uh, translational medicine, biotech, pharmaceutical science and, and biomedical engineering, talking about the healthcare and life science that's really uh, something we we are really uh, focusing on in uh, being in the region and also as a second uh, large focus area we have everything that is nano so nanoscience nanotechnology uh, from nano crystals to nano catalysts is really a, a strong focus we have and also with our associated institutes like the swiss tropical and public health institute we strengthen the outreach in epidemiology and also in having global global impact um, just a few more examples or flavors of co-creation, collaboration projects we, we built as a strong public-private partnership, just two very different example, if I may. Um, we, we started recently a project, a public-private partnership in strengthening the health system and access to medicine in low and middle income countries. This by design has been built as a public-private partnership, bringing together academia, industry, and public sector to tap into real world evidence and really to deliver uh, prediction, diagnostics, and treatment in low and middle income countries. So an example about data, how data can, can drive uh, access to medicine. And a second example, more related to uh, biotech and, and life science, if you want, is the Charmed platform. It's the Center of Human Advanced Regeneration and Mobility in Education and Discovery, a bit of mouthful, but still uh, we think it's really important to find this bottom-up 
public-private partnership. This one is in regenerative medicine and really together with industry and with medical doctors and with scientists, we push to find solution to solve patient needs. Um, of course, as you see on the right, we are open to discuss with any of you what could be your next project together with us and with the whole regional ecosystem. I'm, I'm finished, so thank you very much for your, for your time and looking forward to really build innovation together. For any question, feel free to contact me. Great, thank you, Alessandro. I'd like to hand over to Johannes uh, and the FHNV team. I also start sharing my screen. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, oh yeah, here's the pointer. Um, thanks, Derek, and also thanks, Alessandro. Um, I just moved last year from industry to academia and was always surprised that there is so much uh, innovation here and uh, interesting science done in academia and um, in industry, you hardly know everything. It's difficult to know. There is not a single web page, landing page. So I thought it's a great opportunity to have these Basel area driven workshops where we can learn more and foster innovation here in the region even further. So I moved actually to Mutens, to the University of Applied Sciences. It's more use inspired research than University Basel. Um, the University of Applied Science is actually um, nine schools. Um, there are schools in Basel, in Progwindisch, in Alton, in Solothurn, and in Mutens, a brand new building that is close to the rail station. Probably you've seen that already this brownish cube and the School of Life Sciences where I am is uh, occupying three floors of that um, cube building. We have about uh, close to 600 students, uh, more than 200 scientists and more than 5,000 square meters lab space, plus a process, process technology center where I will tell you a little bit more about uh, later. Um, like what Alessandro mentioned, we um, are heavily in the life sciences in all aspects. Uh, we also have a strong nanotechnology. We do chemistry, analytics, in vitro diagnostics, um, eco technology, um, also um, waste, uh, pollution, solar power uh, technologies. We do medtech, biotech, pharma tech, um, and also a lot of uh, data sciences these days. Our focus is, as I mentioned, on use-inspired innovation. And I will give you also very quickly two examples of that, specifically on the um, Process Technology Center, which is actually a four-story um, uh, installation that holds uh, production for chemistry up to a pilot um, batch of a uh, couple of tens of kilos of material. We can extract natural products. Uh, we have a pharma um, center where we have um, clean rooms, almost GMP ready um, for formulation and production. We have a biorefinery and we have a, environmental technologies in that center. And we can go from a very small lab scale to larger production, which I can show you on the next slide, uh, which is a bit closer to my background. Um, Thomas Filiger and his team, they develop and optimize biotech processes for all kinds of therapeutic modalities like small molecules, RNA molecules, antisense, antibodies, and also viral particles for delivery of gene therapies. And they can do it um, from a couple of milliliters in a lab scale, taking over from a sort of a, an academic lab um, or a very small scale lab, um, and then go up to a pilot scale of about a hundred liter microbial bioreactor. So moving really um, from these technical um, uh, readiness levels that the EU always promotes um, from four to seven um, to be almost um, on the market. If you ask how to collaborate with us, uh, there are a couple of opportunities. There is very um, low level um, opportunities with um, bachelor students and master students from six to 12 months in your lab or in our labs inspired by your ideas. That's low hurdle. 
um, very quickly done. Um, our scientists can consult you, can do contract research where all the IP stays with you. Um, but we also have a lot of third party um, funded projects together with industry and other academic partners like with University Basel, but also DBSSE in the framework of um, InnoSwiss, for example, EU projects and the Swiss National Fund. If you want to know more how to get into contact, uh, my colleague Marion Rutsche, she is the tech transfer officer here at the School of Life Sciences. Um, here's her email already, and she will be also in the breakout room. I hope, Doug, that numbering is okay, that it's two, I don't know. Um, but Yes, we've, we've kept the same, and I've, I've spotlighted Marion, so she can give us a wave now very, as well. Yeah, very good. So if you have questions, um, please go to her breakout room. Thanks a lot. Back to Doug. Thank you, Thomas. All right. Uh, Andrea, for our final institution, um, which is our collaboration institution today, the DBSSE. Thank you. Um, thank you, Doug. Uh, I'd like to quickly introduce the DBSSE to you. We are one of uh, 16 ETH departments in Basel. We're the only one that is not localized in Zurich. Um, what do we do? Our mission is to uh, do excellent research and teaching in biosystems science and engineering. So um, we have an understanding that uh, systems, uh, biological systems can, should be understood first, they can be designed, and they can of course be controlled uh, to do and, and, and re-engineered. Um, we are a bridgehead from Zurich to Basel, so we have it in as our mission also to connect with the Basel um, academia, also with the Basel uh, industry and, and uh, spin-offs that are, are localized here. We are around 20 professors and have, of course, a lot of doctoral students and two master programs here in, in Basel. And this is just a picture to give you an overview and kind of also reminds me to tell you that our research is centered around three um, main areas. So we have the experimentalist dealing with um, um, basic biological problems. We have the uh, computer scientists that um, uh, work on predictions and models, and we have an engineering focus. And uh, for today, I'll focus a bit more on the engineering um, part here to give you some uh, very brief highlights on what uh, is uh, being done in this area here. So when I said biosystems, uh, science, uh, the understanding of what a, a system is, can range from understanding control mechanisms in a single yeast cell up to understanding uh, what Tim Schroeder does, the, the blood as a system, but also um, uh, specific diseases in, in, the, in the human body up to the whole epidemiology of a, of a disease. You might have seen Tanja Stabe recently explaining the pandemic, the epidemiology of the recent SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. So let's focus a bit on the engineering um, groups that we have. So we have two uh, professors that are in the NCCR Molecular Systems Engineering, Konrad Tiefenbacher and Michael Nash. They are localized at the University of Basel and are uh, double professors also at the ETH. Uh, they're working in the chemistry department. Um, Martin Fusenecker is uh, working on designing novel uh, gene circuits that can then use to be reprogrammed uh, therapeutic cells within the body. Um, Daniel Müller is uh, working on nanotechnic and nanotechnological tools, so maybe mainly atomic force microscopy. Um, Peter Dietrich is working on um, miniaturized devices for diagnosis and applications, so she is, for example, developing tools to use the, the smartphone as a diagnostic tool. Sven Panke is involved in uh, biotechnological applications, um, redesigning or, or putting in novel um, engineered engineering principles into, for example, bacteria. Uh, Andreas Hirlemann is working on uh, microfluidic technologies and uh, from his lab very early on, uh, when, when the BSSE was, was founded, Insfero was, was, uh, was uh, company was, was um, spin-off and uh, this collaboration is going to be a major focus of today's um, event so you'll hear more about that. 
Now, how do we collaborate and interact? We have a lot of direct collaborations with academia, but also with the industry and with the recent spin-offs. We do a lot of networking, and I'd like to mention DBSSC meets industry here. David uh, Schweingruber and Sanja are um, co-organizers of today's events, and I'm uh, really very excited that this bottom-up uh, initiative that was started by grad students and postdocs from the BSSC is uh, really very nicely putting together network between academia and, and industry in the Basel area. We do have joint initiatives. I've already mentioned the NCCR Molecular Systems Engineering, but also the Botner Research Center for Child Health really brings together the academia in the Basel area and hopefully then also um, industry. And we do have a number of spin-offs and uh, again, Inspero of course is today's highlight and I'm really looking forward uh, to them telling us about the ongoing collaboration. So here also our um, contact, if you'd like to get in contact and have general questions about how to, to collaborate with uh, DBSSC, you're very welcome to contact me. Also Sonia and uh, David from the DBSSC Meets Industry Initiative are happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, Great. So Thank you, Andrea. I've, I've added uh, David and Sanya to the spotlight, so um, they can, everyone knows who they are. And I think, David, you're taking over now and we'll introduce Insvero. Yes, thanks, Doug. Uh, actually, I'm going to introduce two speakers, which is uh, first Christian Lohas from the Bioengineering Lab from uh, Professor Andreas Hirlemann. Uh, he's currently a postdoc there. And the other speaker is Olivier Frey, who is the head of platforms and technologies at uh, Insphero. And first, I, I would kind of invite both of them to quickly introduce what you do, what is Insphero about, and what is the bioengineering lab, or short, the Bell, doing. So, hello everyone. I'm gonna share the screen. Here we are. Great. Uh, hello, also from my side. Uh, thank you, David, for the introduction. Um, I will start introducing me. I'm Christian Lohas. Um, I am currently a postdoc, as David said, in the bioengineering laboratory of Andreas Hillemann uh, at ETH. And uh, I also want to take the occasion to quickly introduce the bioengineering laboratory. Basically, we have uh, two parts of, uh, of the group. One of the groups, uh, one part of the group is focusing on microfluidics and organ and chip technology. So basically, we are developing, designing, developing, and uh, also realizing mm -hmm. cell culture platforms uh, microfluidic devices uh, for advanced cell culturing methods and uh, the analysis of such uh, cell culture systems. Um, yeah, on this slide, you, you quickly see an example uh, of a hanging drop device that was uh, developed in our lab. So these are a series of hanging drops on a, or below a PDMS substrate interconnected by a microfluidic channel. And each of these drops can, um, can be used to culture uh, single spheroids, three-dimensional cell culture constructs that, in sphero, um, that Olivier will explain a little bit more in detail. We have different variants of these hang and drop platforms. Uh, they can be uh, operated, for example, in hang and drop configurations, some of them also in standing drop configurations. And um, one example is uh, also on the right side, a uh, hang and drop um, device that can be used to immobilize 3D micro tissues in a hydrogel so that they stay in a certain position and uh, we could uh, do some high resolution imaging on these ferrets over uh, multiple hours without dislocation of these micro tissues. More recently, we also focus on, uh, on uh, barrier model, uh, biological barrier models uh, and their incorporation in microfluidic devices. Um, but yeah, you will hear a bit more uh, on different uh, other platforms of the microfluidics group later on in the talk. I also want to mention the other side of, your, uh, of our research group, which focuses on the uh, development of micro electrode arrays and their application for electrophysiology studies. 
So their core technology are these uh, microelectrode arrays based on CMOS technology on which neurons can be plated in the form of uh, primary neurons or um, stem cell derived neurons or even brain slices. And these uh, electrode arrays uh, allow for the stimulation and for the recording of uh, uh, neuronal signaling processes between different cells, but also on a subcellular resolution. For example, uh, the signal propagation along an axon of a single neuron. So this is just a brief overview of the research activities of the Bioengineering Laboratory. And with this, I want to hand over to Olivier, uh, maybe talking a bit about what Inspiro does. Yes, so hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for the intro, and David, uh, as well. So Inspiro is um, located is located in Schlieren, um, just outside Zurich. Um, we are 65 employees now, um, have been um, funded uh, 12 years ago, um, and I'm with Inspero since uh, nearly five years now, so four and a half years. Um, I have a past at the BSEC, um, obviously what we will see uh, later on. And the goal of Inspero is actually to predict uh, human response of different therapies that uh, that will improve how these therapies are um, <clears throat> can be launched in, into the market. So Inspero over the past couple of years has uh, evolved in a couple of strategic business fields. Um, they are highlighted here on the left side. Um, we are strong in predicting liver toxicology uh, using 3D liver microtissues, um, doing investigative toxicology uh, using a different set of, of toolbox uh, applied using these liver microtissues. We currently have a large um, activities in the area of metabolic diseases that includes diabetes 2 and the liver uh, fibrosis and steatosis um, diseases, um, which are pre predominant in the, in the Western countries. And the third business field is, is the oncology field focus on, on immune oncology applications. These different business fields are surrounded by a platform technology uh, that we call Acura 96, 384 and flow technology where my group at Inspero is, uh, is ac activities are focused, uh, focused on. So as I mentioned, the core technology of, uh, of Inspero are these uh, three dimensional micro tissues these are multicellular construct diameter of 200 to 400 micrometers. And the advantage of the technology that has been developed is we can create a lot of different organ model based on the same sometimes adapted um, aggregation technology. So primary cells are feed into hanging drops or special plates. They aggregate into a three dimensional cell construct and then replicate the different functions um, of, uh, of the uh, specific organ. As I mentioned, focus at the moment is on the pancreatic islets, the liver microtissues with different disease models and the tumor microtissues. We in the past have also developed brain microtissues, skin and, and heart microtissues that are used in different applications. And this has uh, been enabled basically as the, as the first um, technical innovation based on which Inspira has been funded nearly 12 years ago, which is the so-called hanging drop technology the technology itself is old, is over 100 years old, but um, what we engineered is a platform that allows to do this in a very automated and reproducible fashion, which is translating uh, this initial hanging drop um, technology where we have these hanging drops just located on the lid of a, of a Petri dish to a multi-title plate, which is then completely industry compatible. And what you can see on the top is then based on that initial technology phase, we then were able to launch these, all these different uh, micro tissues, increasing basically the revenue and, and um, the market penetration um, of 3D tissue cultures. Mm. So that's a bit what Inspira is doing at the moment in what business fields uh, we are and we are Kind of offering these as direct products, so shipped to the customer. We are doing services where companies are sending us uh, uh, sending us compounds that are tested on these uh, different models. But more important, what you're doing is 
that we are partnering up with pharmaceutical and biotechnical industry, uh, putting together collaborative projects, tackling different questions that are actual in these different fields where we have our expertise. Okay, thank you. So I understand that there was one such specific question that the bioengineering lab and Inspiro has collaborated on, and that Inspiro was actually able later to translate into a, into a commercial product. Uh, can you talk about this one project with me? Yes, so this is basically the concept that has been, I think the first ideas were in the region of 2010, and shortly after um, Inspiro has been funded, is that creating a system that allows not to only look at the effect of a compound solely on one isolated tissue model, but to understand how these compounds are acting in a more systemic fashion. And as I mentioned, this technological innovation phase, my, the startup has been funded on this hanging drop technology on the possibility to create three-dimensional micro tissues. And then a company is focused on creating revenue, penetrating the market, et cetera. And what is easily happening is that one forgets to continue with, with further innovation. But this was actually not the case on the, on the Inferro side and, and the ETH side. So very early there, there has been due to the fact that there was a very tight connection between the DBSSC and Inspero. They were already quickly after, um, um, after the launch um, discussions on how next technologies could, um, could basically be developed. And one of them was this concept of the body on a chip, which means that creating a next generation assay platform that allows to combine different micro tissues, uh, human-based micro tissues, and provide a more systemic insight in how compounds or different effects or mechanisms in the human body are happening. On the bottom left, you see a very schematic um, illustration, which was actually uh, one of the figures in the very initial proposal um, that, has been, that has been drawn and showing that there are different micro tissues in a microfluidic channel that then can be, can be combined. And this is basically how it looks very schematically. And um, the micro tissues is something that where, where Inspero had, had the expertise. Um, and now the question is how can they be connected into such a, a, such a microfluidic interacting platform consisting of small channels, small compartments, a small microfluidic pump, for example, sampling ports, infusion ports, um, et cetera. And that's where this, this this collaboration uh, came up because Inspero on the left side had the expertise in 3D culture and the group of Andreas Hielemann at the DBSSC had the expertise in microengineering and microfluidics as a couple of these pictures are highlighting. So at that time, um, there were a lot of activities in that field uh, using microfluidic technology to culture single cells, to culture cell constructs and to investigate what are the benefits of incorporating such small cell constructs into a microfluidic environment that tries to mimic um, basically the, the, in vivo, uh, the in vivo region. And that's then how this project was, uh, was started. And maybe Christian can give a little bit an overview on, on how this evolved um, over, over the time. Yes, uh, definitely. So as Olivier said, um, the, collaborate, the collaboration efforts uh, began almost 10 years ago um, when uh, Inspiro provided us some micro tissues and uh, basically in our side, we performed initial trials and tested different concepts on how to integrate these micro tissues into a microfluidic environment. There were of course simple questions like uh, how can we transfer these micro tissues into a microfluidic environment without harming them during this process? How have these micro tissue compartments, um, how have they to be designed in order to uh, provide them enough, um, enough protection from direct flow and, but also keep them in a certain position? All these parameters um, were part of uh, these initial concepts and shortly after, the first functional prototypes were developed 
um, which could combine up to four different micro tissues along a microfluidic channel. So this is the second image that you can see on the slide. Um, uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a rather small chip. And then the next step was more towards how can we scale up the, uh, the experimentation with these systems? Um, can we parallelize it? And also one of the major aspects that we wanted to address is how can we make the system compatible with uh, standard lab processes? And one of the uh, key points that we addressed was to make our systems compatible with SBS standards, meaning um, adjusting the, the micro tissue compartment positions and also the footprint of our chips to 96 well standards, um, with uh, most of you probably are familiar with. Uh, this also then enables the uh, the automation the automation of certain uh, operational workflows, uh, the loading procedure. And uh, yeah, also uh, stacking of the blades. Uh, yeah, it just increases the scalability of experiments. And then, as a last step, to uh, which was towards the final product that um, that was then also transferred to Insphero as uh, as part of their current portfolio, uh, was the step towards series production. So we needed to redesign the chip uh, and advance from prototyping and. Um, and the production within our labs to a more standardized production uh, workflow, meaning uh, injection molding and using polystyrene as a, as a chip material, which is the most, probably the most commonly used material in cell culture labs. Um, yeah, and this was then more or less two years ago that we, uh, that we ended uh, this, this road that you can see here uh, and came up with this final project, uh, product that was then transferred to Inspiro and is now part of their uh, portfolio. And uh, I guess, Olivia, do you want to go over the details uh, of the chip system? Yeah, maybe I can get um, some, I mean, this is basically the outcome that we, a new organ and chip platform, we named it Acura Flow. And uh, what we are using now in, in collaborative projects uh, together with pharma industry um, developing new ways how compounds are tested and to, to investigate how they are interacting with different different organs. So what you see is an SBS platform um, and that has uh, eight uh, channels uh, in a polystyrene uh, format. Uh, every channel has 10 small compartments, which is visible here. And in this compartment, you have the micro tissue that is transferred using an automated uh, ha liquid handler. Um, into these 10 compartments, we can now load whatever of these six micro tissue, different micro tissue types that I showed before, so that we can look at the interaction of, for example, a tumor micro tissue and a liver micro tissue, or a diseased pancreatic islet with a healthy pancreatic islet to see if there are specific factors that make islets diseased, for example. This kind of platform is very simply built so we have these reservoirs on each side and by tilting the platform back and forth we have the flow that is generated and so that it is these different micro tissues can interact with each other this is done with this tilting platform on the right that also has been engineered and it allows now to use um, this system to run many experiments in parallel and this was one of our major um, specifications to keep this scalability, what the micro tissues offers also in a multi uh, tissue setup. And this is a picture that shows that. So we cannot just run one single multi organ body on a chip system, but we can run many of them in parallel to really get the statistics that are needed. Okay, so that sounds like a very impressive collaboration over 10 years, really from an initial idea uh, down to final product. And so, so one question that I've kind of been wondering about is how does such a collaboration between academia and industry influence uh, a small company on, or, uh, or an academic lab? Yeah, maybe I can quickly start. I mean, for us, uh, it's a new it's a new core technology that has been created. I mean, I showed this before um, how 
let's say the the revenue has been increasing using a technology that allows to to, to construct the multiple micro tissues uh, from the same technology. Now what we have is a new platform that allows to combine these different um, technologies and uh, the different micro tissues, allowing new applications, allowing to create a kind of new products that then can, as a next step, increase the growth of a of a small um, company. Certainly, also on the on the um, on the academic side, um, I let you, Christian. Um, Yes, so uh, of course, this long lasting uh, collaboration within Sphero has also influenced uh, uh, the research focus of our lab and um, which led to a large outcome of, uh, of a different publication that focused on micro tissue on uh, applications with micro tissues on different ana analysis uh, methods for micro tissues here, for example, you can see a, uh, a platform that um, that we developed to monitor the size of uh, such micro tissues in a non optical and non invasive way using uh, electrical impedance uh, spectroscopy. Then another platform, um, which was one of the hang drop platforms. Um, Olivier, if you could, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the hang drop platforms um, that I also previously mentioned before. Uh, was uh, developed and uh, sensors were integrated into these uh, hang drops to assess the metabolic state of cancer micro tissues. Um, the, these biosensors were, uh, were used to measure glucose concentration, glucose con uh, consumption of the uh, tumor micro tissues and their lactate generation uh, in real time, again, uh, non invasively. Um, Another variant of the hang drop system focused on the high resolution imaging by immobilizing micro tissues in a hang drop network. Um, we had a hang drop system that could uh, assess uh, the dynamics of insulin release by pancreatic islets by uh, sampling the supernatant of uh, in such a system. And we were also able to combine uh, different micro tissue types in a hang drop platform. Here, for example, we combined liver spheroids with embryoid body to do advanced um, embryonic toxicity testing with also taking the uh, metabolism related effects by the liver into account uh, when, uh, when doing drug testing. But this is just a, a selection of different uh, publications focusing on microfluidic technology that we, we developed in our labs um, with uh, micro tissues that were provided in a collaboration by Insphere. Okay, so, so I understand you, you've had multiple collaborations, so there wasn't just this one big project, but you actually collaborated together on very different technologies. Yes, exactly. Um, so we've had multiple collaborations. Um, the one that we showcase today uh, that started 10 years ago, first with the body and chip and then resulted in an implementation um, at Insphero as, uh, as one of their platforms. Uh, we now have a follow-up project uh, of this one um, where we also aim on developing such a microfluidic platform uh, that is able to also flush immune cells through the system that can then interact on different organs uh, in, uh, in this microfluidic devices. Then another uh, chip system that was also in the previous slides, the flow GSIS, which is the glucose stimulated insulin secretion of pancreatic islets and the analysis of uh, the insulin re release. This is a project that is, um, that is uh, soon to be transferred and also implemented at Insphero. We've had uh, combinations of uh, cancerous immune cells, leukemia cells uh, with uh, liver metabolism on a chip. This platform is currently under development and uh, is then also aims at the implementation uh, at a third party collaborator. Then uh, I mentioned in previous slide also the uh, metabolically competent embryonic toxicity test, combining liver with uh, embryoid bodies and uh, in another project we combine liver metabolism with uh, drug testing approaches uh, for drugs against uh, certain parasites. So yeah, you can see it's a, it's quite a large range of collaborations that we had uh, that we had with Insphero. Some of them uh, might be then at a later stage be integrated uh, in 
in the InSphere portfolio. Some of them remain purely academic and others are, uh, are to be into, uh, implemented in third party collaborators. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, maybe, can I, maybe I can have a, a quick, <clears throat> uh, quick comment on, on the implementation side. I mean, this is something where we, when we start projects, we are always evaluating a little bit uh, what is, how does the project fit into, um, into the portfolio of Inspero. Um, it's not all collaborative projects, um, which we see kind of on short term that this is something where that can be directly implemented because there are many factors that play into implementation. That's on the one hand, the, 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 the short term or mid term um, need on the market, um, but it is also how good it basically fits into the portfolio that we already have because we need the experts here. We need to know who to address. We need customers, customer relationships that need to be established to can then launch a specific, specific product. And sometimes even though it's a very interesting uh, uh, project that we can build together that creates the visibility and show how micro tissues can be used in a microphysics system. It does not mean that it is something that Inspire itself can directly implement because it's just not something that 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 fits into into the business plan or the business model that that Inspire is following. Um, just something to to give a little bit of reason why some are integrated and and some are not. Okay, thank you. Um, then when you collaborate so much and so closely over a very long period, there, there must be some secret ingredients to your partnership <laughs> that allows you to be so, uh, so successful and to, to really keep this up over a long time. So, so what are, are the factors that, that allow you to collaborate so effectively? You want to start, Christian? <laughs> I, can, I can start, yes. Yeah, so, uh... The, I guess one of the, of the secrets is that um, Inspira and the Bioengineering Laboratory as uh, collaboration partners um, are very complementary. Um, the one side focusing on the biological model and um, also having this in place in a very standardized uh, way. Um, and us on the tech side being able to really focus on the technological um, development of, of devices for the culturing of such uh, micro tissues without having to focus too much on the generation of a suitable um, micro tissue model. Um, yeah, so I, I think the, the give and take between the two partners is, uh, uh, is at the uh, right scale, I would say, yeah. Um, and it's, I think uh, it's also kind of historically uh, due to the fact that Inspira has been spinned out from from the bioengineering laboratory there is since the beginning kind of a very tight um collaborations or even friendship between uh, the different heads and the the group members within both sides i mean uh, christian and me are exemplary uh, so i was at bscc for six years and five years ago transferred to inspiro with, with some of the technology that we implemented and 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 inspiro uh, and, and christian was at inspiro and and then decided uh, once you have seen the capabilities that uh, that the lab at, at ETH can do to transfer uh, at that time, I think from a master thesis um, to the uh, to do his PhD at uh, at the bioengineering lab. So um, and and that's why the complementary the complementarity that you can see on this slide also kind of shows that each of the partners can bring a lot of different expertise into these collaborations and the tight connection and the very open communication between the different parties make that uh, that new ideas can be generated and that and the, the projects are um, that successful as, as they are at the moment. <clears throat> Were there also difficulties when you had to work together? Um, yeah, I mean, clearly there is, I mean, sometimes there is a different focus. I mean, you have on the, on the university side, I would say there is a pressure to publish, the pressure to create new things. Um, 
and to, to, to kind of go into avenues where no one has been. Um, on the industrial side, you, you need the lot system that are applicable and that are that can be used and um, you have different other factors, not only, let's say, publications, but kind of also the customer needs, et cetera, simplicity, et cetera, that routine experiments, validations that are also um, important. So that's where you, you need to find a good fit uh, so that each partner basically is, is kind of um, approaching a little bit the other one so that so that the, the, the university has the capability to publish the results, but at the same time that the systems that are produced are not just kind of working inside a, an academic lab with a postdoc sitting beside it the whole night, because otherwise it would break down, but something that we can really use in industry in a very reproducible manner. Okay, thank you. Um, Doug, I think we should have time for one or two questions from the audience that are in the chat. I think that are very interesting. Yeah, so why don't you grab them in the chat and, and yeah. ask them. Um, so, so there is one question, uh, not sure to whom it goes, but it's uh, whether you already have data comparing model drug response and uh, patient response. Uh, so I mean, this is a question that goes really di directly into the into the technology itself, I believe. So, um, I mean, we had um, this has been published, and, and one of the papers has just been recently published uh, published by by Christian uh, on drug drug interactions uh, using uh, a liver tumor model. Um, maybe you can have a quick uh, quick overview on that. Yes. So. Um... As Olivia said, recently we published this um, this paper uh, assessing drug-drug interactions um, in the in a multi-tissue configuration in the Acura flow system. We used uh, tumor microtissues and liver microtissues and dosed them with certain combination of drugs. Um, and the combinations that we used in this case uh, in this case were on the one hand pro drugs which are uh, drugs that need to undergo metabolization in the liver in order to become active on the uh, tumor tissue. And on the other hand, uh, um, the second drug that we dosed in parallel was um, uh, ritonavir, which, uh, which is a cytochrome uh, enzyme inhibitor that could inhibit this, uh, met um, this metabolization of the prodrug in the liver. And we could see uh, responses of the system that uh, such things such processes, drug-drug uh, interactions actually happened also in our system, which were uh, comparable to what was also published, yeah. Um, then another, so my more technical question is, so what are the limitations of, of the platform we developed together? Or the technological I mean, the technological limitations are, I mean, if you, if you build a model, there is always, um, it has capabilities, but it also has limitations. I mean, one of the limitations lies in the, in the spherite, in the, in the microtissue spherite. I mean, it's a, it's a three-dimensional microtissue that in, can incorporate multiple cell types. For example, for the liver, we can incorporate up to four different cell types that allowed to look at inflammation, that allowed that, that I will look at immune response, etc. But it's a three-dimensional, very 200 micrometer diameter uh, construct without any vascularization. And um, there is no endothelium inside. So we cannot basically model the endothelium um, within the, the liver microtissue uh, model, for example. This is uh, similar for, for, let's say, tumor microtissues. We don't have like a, a the full, let's say, embedding into into the into the body itself. So there is not the full modulation of the of the tumor microenvironment. And if you go for for this aspect on the flow system, um, we also see that we are not fully able to replicate the different masses of uh, of the different organ models. This is something where um, 
there are there larger systems are are more feasible uh, that are have more cells inside and less volume so that the 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 tissue to to liquid ratio is more adequate to to the human being and um, the model is what it is good for it is to look at paracrine or endocrine interaction of different micro tissues so to look at productions of metabolites, for example, of the liver, what the influence is on another tissue type or releases of cytokines of a fat microtissue or adipokines of a fat microtissue on an islet microtissue or on a liver microtissue. Maybe you have other comments, Christian? Yes, yeah, so one of the limitations of the platform that we developed was also the, uh, the lack of uh, an immune response. Uh, but this is basically what we're addressing now with the new chip system. Yeah. Okay, so maybe there is one more question. It's, it's probably very uh, uh, more, more on the business side. So maybe can you quickly comment on the, on the IP situation? Because I mentioned this is uh, relatively complex. I mean, within within these projects, I mean, most of the projects, I mean, show, we just showed the collaboration, but these collaborations are in in majority framed by either a European project or an InnoSwiss project. And there we have the contracts that clearly define how the IP situation is, um, is, is divided. So for the core flow system, for example, um, it was exactly the same case. Uh, there has been patents that have been that have been filed for this, and we are just licensing out um, this uh, um, this this patents um, in order that we can uh, that can use it to 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 commercialize uh, this technology. Okay, well, thank you both very much. I think, in the sake of time, we should uh, hand it over now to Doug again. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for that great um, insight into this particular collaboration. And now there are four options for um, participants. Uh, the first one is to continue a deep dive into the Inspiro uh, project and, and ask um, more detailed questions, um, maybe understand the business model a bit more, maybe um, get uh, more techie. Um, or, 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 or whatever you're interested in. Then the other two topics are more general. So how to collaborate with academic partners and um, that will be, I th that is Alessandro and I think Andrea um, and Marion uh, will be in that from the respective institutions. Um, and then the la third one is what are the topics we could work with you on? Um, so, you know, a bit of an understanding of what is the actual tech that you could work with um, and Johannes will be leading that and if you're just here for unplanned collisions um, and here for the apero then that's probably a disappointing apero but you can join room number four um, all of those rooms are now open um, you can join them as you wish uh, they will go for 15 minutes and then we will um, we'll close them and bring back uh, the summary at the end. Hello and welcome back. Hello. How, how were discussions in room two? Were we as, as critical as last time to tech transfer or? Maybe a bit less, maybe a bit less, <laughs> a lot of compliments about how much is, is, is happening. Okay. Uh, but still the, the right level of challenging, I would say. Okay, good. When everyone comes back, I think we, um, with the uh, snafu from my side on the breakout rooms, we, we've we missed a couple of minutes. So I think we'll do a quick summary, um, but I'll let, I mean, people can just stay on the call if they wanna keep having a chat and for another 15 minutes or so and we'll see how that if that anyone stays for that but i think if just each room gives a brief you know feedback on what they discussed you know i mean sort of 60 seconds or something and then we'll we'll close up just a little bit late
shall I give a quick wrap up of the Inspero deep dive? Yes, we, so about, yeah, uh, we'll, oh. we'll give a quick wrap up um, for each of the rooms. I think we've oh. got room one, have we got everyone back? No, I don't think. Uh, actually, it's not telling me who has, who's still in rooms and who's back. So I'll, let's assume everyone's back by now. Um, so actually, why don't we start with you, Olivia, and a, a summary of um, room one and what you, what you spoke about? Um, I mean, there are, I think there were questions on, on two ends. On the one hand, on the IP. So how did we negotiate the IP situation? So specifically here for, for this platform that we have developed. Um, on the one hand, like initially with the contracting, but otherwise also on the, on the implementation side. And then there were like a more deeper questions on the system itself, uh, meaning uh, kind of how many micro tissues can be connected? What are the limitations? Hmm. Would vascularization, for example, be an option that we could include uh, biosensors, um, et cetera? So this was a quick wrap up, wrap up from the session. Okay. Um, from room two, Alessandro or Andrea or um, Marian. Oh, so man, maybe I can I can just say uh, something uh, quickly. The main feedback was about the model of technology transfer that in uh, Switzerland in general or in the Basel region seems to favor much more the startup model rather than the straight out licensing model from uh, from uh, academia to industry. Whether it's because the industry wants to de risk a lot or whether the project from academia that come from the region here are uh, early stage. It's a bit uh, uh, an item to be to be explored and under and understood in a sense. And then also quite some compliments about the amount of outreach uh, that the region is doing, even if uh, with the usual Swiss and maybe Basler understatement. So not making so much noise. Okay, great. Andrea, did you have something to add? No. All right, great. I think it was a very nice summary, so good. Okay, great. Uh, room number three. Mm -hmm. We had a good conversation mm -hmm. on more general things. Also one related a bit to microfluidics and modeling and the other one on a very different topic. Um, so it was good that we were sort of also a mixed background in that room. Um, from the Institute, so we could answer also a chemistry question. And um, there it's also a little bit always about the, the shape of the collaboration, how does it how does it work? Always together with a little bit IP, so sometimes it's good to send the people then to room two and ask the question, but we, um, we also mentioned that we can talk then offline um, and with all the email addresses given. And I think, Doug, it's also good to um, sort of uh, share the presentation or our email addresses uh, that the people have later on a, so, a contact version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. we'll be sharing. Um, uh, we will be sharing. There will be a recording of today. We also will have um, all of the uh, email addresses you have here, and the presentations will be made available. So mm -hmm. um, please, I think, continue those conversations is probably the the key to the collaboration. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just a start to give an overview and, and small pieces of, of inspiration um, and begin those conversations. And really um, what we're hoping to do is, is that people will follow up and, and continue to discuss. Um, the next um, topic is, is open. Um, we may uh, deep dive on, on Alessandro's comment or the, the discussion from room two. Um, you know, com uh, collaborations with larger companies rather than um, than startups, or perhaps there will be another startup academia one or something else. There may be another interesting collaboration we might want to show. Um, if anyone from the audience has a collaboration they'd like to highlight, please get in contact with any of us. Um, 
and we'd be more than happy to, to, to do that. Um, but I think we can wrap up today slightly over time, but um, I think it was great discussion. Olivia, thank you, Olivia, Christian and David for a great insight into Insphero and that collaboration. I think, um, uh, you know, a great example of what can happen when, when people know each other and can work well over time. Um, you know, I think maybe next time we should choose something a bit more controversial. So it's, it's less love maybe next time should be the goal. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think that was great. It was really fantastic. Um, please be in touch with uh, any questions you have. Please contact those institutions um, and you will get presentations, etc. If you would like to stay and have specific questions um, and our partners are, are happy to stay online um, for a few more minutes, I would close the general um, meeting now. But if people are happy to stay around um, then we, we can continue answering questions in the chat or, or if people have questions. And um, we can do that for another 10 minutes or so um, if people are happy to do that. So. But from my side, thank you for today. Um, great to have um, you all here and I'm looking forward to collaborations in the future. So stay around, stay around and ask some questions in the chat or directly or, um, or drop off and, and have a great evening. <laughs>